Hi, I'm Sam from Prismic. Today I'm here with the incredible creative developer Marius Bello. Marius, hey, nice to have you here. Well, thanks for thanks for having me here. Cool. So uh, today we're going to do three videos together. We're going to talk about uh, how you got into generative art and creative coding. Uh, we're also going to talk about um, uh, some of like the exciting new technologies in JavaScript and coding, and like what's what's new and innovative and exciting. And uh, you're also going to actually show me personally how to make some generative 3D art, and I'm really excited about it. It's going to be fun, actually. Yeah. So uh, first of all, can you tell us a little bit um, about what you do? I am a, a I am an engineering student right now in uh, Effray, Paris, situated located in the in the south of Paris. But uh, on the side, I am a freelance software creative developer. Some of the things I do could be like some design, but also uh, a lot of 3D stuff, uh, real-time animations, and a lot of uh, websites. For example, uh, I am currently working on a website with uh, someone located in London. Uh, last year, it was with someone located in, uh, in uh, Italy. And this is really nice to work with people around the world on different types of, mm -hmm. uh, of apps. Uh, the different technologies that I use could be from uh, Vue.js with Fit.js, all the way to Blender with like pre-calculated images mm -hmm. and uh, stuff like that. And something that um, normally I wouldn't tr draw attention to, but you talked about it a little bit in our conversations before we started filming, is that like you're pretty young for a professional creative developer. Uh, yeah, I, I started pretty young. Um, I created my, uh, let's say, company when I was 18 years old. Um, when I was uh, at school at uh, at a city called uh, Montbéliard in the in the east of France at uh, MMI, um, I saw that with all those things that I have learned about web development, design, and stuff like that, that a lot of people were interested in those uh, in those things, and uh, by publishing personal work on Instagram and stuff like that, it draws attention. And people started to came to me to ask uh, this favor and that favor and started to ask, how can I pay you? And I didn't have an answer. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I created my company. And uh, yeah, it's, I don't know if it's luck, maybe also work. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's working pretty, pretty well on the site mm -hmm. as well as the, as the studies. Yeah. So how did you start creating art with code? Uh, I was in high school, and uh, beginning of high school. And I did all of those things with uh, with, after, uh, with uh, After Effects on the, on the side, just as a hobby, as I said. And one day, uh, a guy that we know in the in the family who always come, who is a, a friend of the of the family, uh, Dorian, came uh, came up. He's a, a couple years uh, older than me. He already was into uh, higher studies, and he he saw what I uh, what I did on uh, on my computer, and uh, and he was like. Do you know this stuff is what I learned in, in second year? This is literally what I do every day for studies. Hmm. And I was like, there, there, there is no way you, 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 you can do that and, and maybe make a living out of those things. There is no way. So I was still focused in medicine and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we do. Like, just come, uh, come at my house. I, I, I will show you what, uh, what we do. And I think it will, it will interest you. I, I went and like in his, in his room, I just saw everything that I could ever dream of as a, <laughs> as a tech lover. I came to the room, there was like a desk with a Mac Pro, you know, the, the 2013 uh, Trascan mm -hmm. Mac, Mac Pros, mm -hmm. with like a rendering of Cinema 4D. I really didn't know what it was at the time, with a fluid simulation rendering. On another screen, he was doing a uh, generative logo design with like JavaScript input. I didn't understand anything that he told me, but it was poetic <laughs> almost to, to, to us those things. I look at my back, there was a, uh, a plastic thing where he was training to do generative projection mapping on it. And I saw all of those things and I, and, and this was like, w without this experience, I wouldn't be here today. Not at all. Thanks to this guy, everything like happened, every, every single thing. And I was like, what, what the hell are you, are you doing right now? So this is your studies, right? I'm like, yeah, this is what I do 24-7 and uh, even lost uh, a couple hours of sleep, but this is what I do. I'm like, what do you do? And he told me about this, uh, this school, MMI Montbéliard. So this is just two years after, um, after, uh, after high school where you learned uh, design, a bit of communication and development. 
And that night when I came back uh, to, to my house, uh, medicine was like gone, completely out of the question. I was like, you can really make a living out of those things. And he told me, yeah, just, just wander around and just look about a bit of processing. I think you will like it. But boy, oh boy, did I like it. I, I came back, installed it to my computer, and, and this, is, this was the, the start of actually coding and seeing what you, what you are coding. This and this is processing. What is processing? So processing is a uh, beginner uh, dev environment where, you, where it's actually uh, graphics-based. It is really, really easy. For example, uh, when you open the IDE, the processing IDE, if you simply do rect, R-E-C-T for rectangle, and then pass in a few arguments, the X position and the Y position, uh, X, Y position and uh, X and Y uh, size, you directly see it on your screen. Pretty simple, right? Mm -hmm. Easy. And I was like, okay, but uh, what can you do with it? And like, you implement a couple of loops, you have a, a, a few request animation here and there, implement data, and you really start to have some fun with the thing. And I saw all the possibilities with just a computer, a bit of algorithm knowledge, and I was like, man, did I miss something. And yeah, this was my very first line uh, of code when I was so 14, 15, something like that. So when people talk about art, a lot of the time they're talking about, they talk about like the inspiration that goes into the art, you know, what they see in the world and how that inspires them. Mm -hmm. For you, I mean, going back to when you started and today, uh, what is the inspiration that, from the real world, world that goes into your uh, generative art? Um, actually, when I... When I finally uh, came to study those things, the very first thing that uh, they, they made us learn uh, at school was actually, so I don't know how to translate that, but la veille, actually going online and getting inspired. This was actually part of our homeworks, going mm -hmm. every night on the internet, getting inspired. Like go on awards, for example, see the latest thing that happened there. Going on Twitter, finding a few uh, accounts that did certain things that really uh, really make us feel something in terms of art. So this was when I started to, to learn that, yeah, this is how you're going to get good at those things, just watching people do, do, do things. And um, yeah, it started here, but now it's become more of a, a natural thing to just, yeah, having inspiration all the time. Mm -hmm. And to answer your particular question of where do I get those? So I, I kind of set up my environment so that when I open a screen, whether it is Google or, or my phone or Instagram or something, I always have something related to generative arts or mm -hmm. something. Always, always, always. It's always on. Mm -hmm. It's always on. So you're only 21, and last year you kind of had a, a bit of a breakout success with a uh, collaboration you did with the uh, Italian sound artist Chiara Luzana, mm -hmm. uh, which was a website that won the awards site of the day. Um, following on that, you've got a course from awards. How did that um, project with Chiara Luzana come to be? Um, as, as you said, uh, I have this art, big quotes that I post every day on Instagram and stuff like that related to web technologies nowadays. And uh, after uh, MMI, I went also to Goblin, a pretty well-established uh, school in uh, web development, where I was uh, also uh, working at the Make Me Pulse studio, which allowed me to know a lot about web, uh, web development and just 3D in general. So that allowed me to have a, a nice set amount of skill set to start to not only do nice stuff that moves on Instagram, but also pretty well done projects, like a nice looking portfolio, uh, well animated with like nice project with certain web technologies and stuff like that. And I just started to uh, publish those on Twitter. I wasn't a big, uh, I, I wasn't a big uh, Twitter guy at the time. I'm much more on Instagram. But uh, it was under the, the, um, the suggestion of a friend that you should really start to get into Twitter with your web development stuff. I did it, started to, once again, having fun with web technologies. And uh, like a lot of other freelance uh, projects that I have, they always come through social media, Instagram and stuff. Mm, wow. And uh, cool. always, all, they, they always do. And uh, also like that, I, only maybe 5% of my work was located in France. 
the rest is really world-based. This is actually pretty, pretty crazy to me. And one day on Twitter, this guy uh, comes to me uh, named uh, Nicolo, Nicolo Miwanda. And uh, he asked me, hi, I saw you do a bit of 3D. Do you also do sound-related stuff? I was like, I absolutely do. This is exactly what I do. Here is my Instagram. Man, this is, this is like... Are you are you asking a chef if he cooks? <laughs> Obviously, I do I do those things and I love to do it. Well, why are you coming to me? Yeah, because I have this little project going on with like let's imagine uh, you have a, a a 3D thing going in the background and it moves to music, etc. He said 3D. He said music. He said interactions. I was like, man, of course, of course, I'm down. Got on it and it was intense to say the least. Actually, it was pretty tight on schedule, and uh, the the clients, like every client ever, was uh, really tight on the, on schedule and, and deadlines and stuff like that. So, yeah, I went on for, to to this project, and uh, it was it was quite the the experience. Yeah. Wow, and the reception was huge. Like uh, you got the award side of the day. Were you expecting that? The awards uh, f- for me was like something that I wanted for for so long. From the first day that I went to this particular room and saw everything, when I came back and started to learn processing, I, I went down this rabbit hole of like nice websites with 3D. And this is when I've learned about, uh, I've, I've learned of awards. So for me, the the rewarding thing wasn't the award itself, but was to work on a particular mm-hmm. award uh, related thing. And so now you're studying at FRA Paris. Uh, what do you do there? I started to look online to like, what can I do as a software engineer? What can I do? How can I do this? How can I do that? And uh, this is when I saw uh, this web page for a particular school based in Paris, an engineering school. Uh, so Effray Paris, where I am right now, with this program for aerospace engineering and, uh, and for medical stuff, like robotics for, uh, for the medicine. And I was like, oh, damn. This is what I should have been doing. It has computers, it has fun algorithms, I can meet people, and yeah, I could help people to do that, but apparently I, I can't. In, in France, you have this pretty tight thing about engineering schools that you have to go to a preparatory class to integrate those, and I was like, man, this is going to be hard to do. And I just sent my, my files, presented myself, my project, and uh, I succeeded. And now wow. I am in the in this school trying to reroute what I can do, but helping humans along the way. So at FA Paris, are you still using those same skills like JavaScript and web development, or are you learning an, a whole new skill set? I don't use. I still have this hobby because once again, I love to do those, but not those technologies in general, but the algorithm thinking and how to. Um, how can I say that? How to deconstruct something that I would like to do with code? Like your when, when you are when you are coding, you have this way of thinking, like um, decomposing what do you need to do to create something. And uh, this is something that really helped me. Whatever new technologies came uh, to to our plate when we need to learn something like uh, a library for robotics in Python, uh, C or just thing in general that I didn't really touch, uh, it really came quite easily thanks to those years of uh, development. Mm-hmm. So um, I understand you're leaving for Montreal in a number of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's happening there? Uh, so I'm in my second year in Effray Paris to become an engineer, which is a three-year uh, program. And in our second year, we need to find an internship going from November to April. And uh, uh, I needed to find uh, something related to robots and medicine. And I started to look around. And uh, since I went to Montreal in 2018 and fell deeply, deeply in love with the city, I was like, maybe it's... Uh, Maybe it's time to to see if I can do something about it and maybe do my internship over there. Maybe it's an idea. And I start to to look for companies. And I just typed Montreal Robots Medicine, just your simple buzzword uh, research on Google. And there is this this company that pops up that looks like a a startup called uh, Happily Montreal. And I go to the website and they are working on this 
bizarre thing on their website that is explained, but I am not really sure about the thing. I started to do some research. Uh, they are working currently on a surgery training robot with VR. Basically, imagine you have a VR headset and you are working on a patient. You have tools that you can move around and have haptics feedbacks around what you are touching. And so this is basically uh, uh, VR, but uh, even more augmented with like wow. kind of tools you can you can touch and stuff like that. I saw the thing. I was like. I want that. <laughs> it's like, this is exactly the type of stuff that I want. It has robotics, like I wanted. It works on medicine, and it even, ha it even has VR with like 3D stuff that I know of. They use Unity, something that I did back in uh, Make Me Pulse and also at school. So everything was there. I was like, this is just impossible. Those are the guys. And I contacted uh, one on, uh, on LinkedIn and I sent my, my CV, my portfolio, and I was like, you guys do the stuff that I would like to, to be part of. I would like to say I have worked on this thing. Even if it is just a simple console log in the scripts, I want to say I have worked on this robot at one time because some I think they called and it was like, we, we can do something. Wow. So you've got uh, immersive experiences, uh, robotics, uh, Montreal, and doing something that makes an impact. Yeah. Every, everything simply is there. I don't know what is missing, but like this is everything I want. And the, and the guys are like super duper nice, like, you know, Canadians. And uh, th yeah, they, they, were, they were like so, so, so cool and just really showed me that they wanted me to to go there to like add my, my little break to this monument that they are building. Marius, thank you so much for sharing your story and your journey with, into web development with us. It was really amazing to hear about um, how you've gotten to where you are. Um, and next up, we're going to have a conversation about the future of web development and ex some exciting new trends and technologies. So uh, if you want to be sure not to miss it, just make sure to subscribe.